Muito bem. <risos> All right, good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome, right, to North Baptist Church. We're excited to have you this morning. We're excited for those on Facebook this morning that you have joined us. Uh, I do encourage you to go ahead and, and share this on your page so others can uh, be a part and, and, and share in the worship service this morning. Uh, they can also, uh, we have several that uh, watch in days to come even, so I encourage you to, to share that. So I'm going to try to get uh, going here. Did you have a good week this week? Yes. Did you have a good week this week? Yes. Yeah, say amen. It was a good week. It was hot, but now it's cool. Amen. Devin's even got a sweatshirt on because it's so cool. Uh, I said, man, what are you going to do when, when winter gets here? All right, anyway, we are excited to have you this morning. Uh, we're going to... Uh, go ahead and get started this morning with prayer. So if you will join me this morning, I would appreciate that. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning uh, again for an opportunity to gather in your house. And Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that we have in this country that allows us to, uh, to do that very thing. Uh, Lord, we know those, those freedoms aren't free. Uh, we know that those come at the cost of many uh, lives of men and women over the years. And so, Lord, we, we give you thanks for that. We thank you for uh, the provision of each one of those servicemen. Lord, I think of even uh, Jacob Skidell this morning as he's continuing to serve in Japan in the Marines. And Lord, we just ask for your blessings on his life this morning, that you would just continue to strengthen him and, and that uh, he would be a, a true blessing to you, not just in the service, but in your service. Uh, Lord, this morning we are excited to be in your house. We're excited to join with those on Facebook this morning. Uh, we're excited to be able to worship together. And Lord, we really pray this morning that our worship is truly focused on you, uh, that we acknowledge you, that uh, you receive the, the true uh, glory and honor that you deserve, uh, Lord, not only this morning, but each and every day of the week from our lives. And Lord, we give you praise this day, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you stand this morning, we're going to sing, I'll Fly Away. And I'm going to watch to see if anybody is. <laughs> Sure, if several of you could, because I've seen that 
rocking and going and clapping, and I thought maybe you were going to catch some turbulence there, and we were going to we were going to take off. That would have been great, right? Hey, we're excited to have you this morning. It, it, it's a great opportunity to, to worship with one another. Uh, I've got a few announcements here this morning, and then we'll have some time of, of prayer. Um, we did get some some of your plastic shopping bags this morning, Ron. I know you brought yours, you and Linda. Thank you. Continue to bring them weekly. We go through uh, multiple bags each week, and I know people are, are bringing them in, and you think, well, we don't, yeah, they surely have enough, and I can tell you we surely don't. Uh, uh, we continue to use them and use them and use them, so just keep, keep buying stuff that you get bags, support our economy, and then give us the bags. Okay, that's all, that's all we're asking. Uh, so if you would do that, uh, the North Baptist Food Pantry is uh, from 1 to 4 on Tuesdays. Um, I keep encouraging them. It's going great. They're up to about 40 families now that they're starting to, uh, to reach, which is really good. Uh, a lot of those are, are senior adults, so we haven't even reached uh, uh, the, the real families with the, with the kids and stuff yet. So as that starts to go, it's really going to increase. So it's really it's, it's exciting. Um, Pomona's is Thursday uh, from 1 to 4. And... That just consistently is about 70-some each week. And uh, you guys were, were great last week. We had a huge load, right? Amen. Uh, we had like 19,000 pounds of food come in. And the whole inner sanctuary of the lighthouse was completely full, if you don't believe me. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. And we got a lot of it distributed out, a lot of it put away. And so we really appreciate your help. Uh, but that continues to go as well. <clears throat> the blessing box, uh, I would encourage you to, to pray for that as people come in and out and, and use that. That's a real, uh, I just really appreciate that opportunity that we have for this site as well. Um, this week's Wednesday night Bible study will be session five in the blue book. Again, the books are free. I encourage you to, to take those and, and, and utilize those or have one with your friends or something. Uh, this week is Compelled by Love, and that's the session for this week. It'll be on on Facebook and and. All those messages that are either on Wednesday night or Sunday morning, if you don't have Facebook, they turn around and are on the web page throughout the week as well. So you can always go back and, and watch those and keep up and listen uh, that way as well. And we encourage you uh, to do that. Um, right after church, anyone who's interested in helping with the children's ministry, which Gary said he thought it was every one of you. And I agreed. I, I agreed with you. Uh, just come up here for a minute. We're just going to have a short meeting afterwards and, and, and fill in some seats or something if you want to. And, 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 and we'll just kind of meet and kind of talk, go over uh, what the plan is and how it's going to work and what we want. So we'd appreciate you uh, just kind of scooting on up here uh, after the service. Um, prayer concerns this morning. Uh, I do want to continue to remember uh, baby crew uh, and the Sylvester family. Uh, uh, some things are happening, good things are happening, some things are needed, and so we just continue to ask for, for prayer uh, with them and the family and uh, for all the extended family as well. Uh, the associational search team continue to pray for them as they become uh, closer to a new director of missions. Uh, Stephen Shirley Taylor uh, from First Southern Baptist Pratt, Shirley has LS, and you saw several week, uh, several this week, I sent through Emily the prayer chain, several pastors around the state are really struggling with with some health. And so that means not only are they struggling, but the church is struggling in the midst of what's going on with their pastors. And so uh, really, really do lift those up in prayer. It's, it's really an important uh, part of, of who we are as a, as a sister church. Um, my nephew Charles is, is still struggling through with his chemo there in, in, uh, in Wichita. I'll just continue to pray for him and, and his cancer. Uh, Joe's brother-in-law is still unable to have his surgery, uh, Steve Green. So we're Praying that God, nothing has caught anybody by surprise. So uh, God knows everything that's going on there. So continue to uh, lift that up in prayer uh, for his surgery. Uh, Willie and Carl, uh, for their health. Uh, Willie's cousin Debbie uh, is waiting some test results. And then you saw this week that Willie's dad, his health is kind of, uh, with dementia, is kind of failing. And so we're asking prayer for him as well. Uh, continue to pray for Cora and, and her health and recovery and just strength for those uh, ligaments and tendons and muscles and and so maybe she'll be in the 5k next year uh we'll we'll have brad hook her up with one so uh but just continue to pray for for strength for her uh and, and linda and her knee we're praying that god is you're getting closer yes it is some way somehow 
Oh. Well, praise the Lord. The doctor has COVID. Yeah, oh, yeah, great. So. Uh, well, God knows. <laughs> well, we're just going to continue to pray. And, and we will. So uh, keep us updated on that. And pray for Owen as well. Uh, I mentioned Jake this week. Uh, I've talked to him several times this week. Uh, he, he, you know, is, is getting farther away from when he's been home. And so uh, he's got some uh, unspoken prayer requests going on and really trying to get him to focus on the Lord and, and don't let things, you know, your surroundings, your circumstances, which is what I try to get you guys to do too. Don't let your circumstances and your situations uh, control you. And, and even though, like Linda, that uh, it does at times, uh, it, it really is important to not. And so that's what I've tried to encourage him with this week. So continue to lift him up in prayer. He, he's doing pretty good overall. Um, Donna Pat and, and baby Asher, uh, prayers for those. Uh, and then, and Ruth and Jerry, I saw this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, Rex is here this morning. Uh, um, Darlene is having some shoulder uh, issues this morning, so she stayed home. So pray for her. Uh, Irma and, and Dee's kind of still dealing with that Bell's palsy. Shannon's here this morning. Good to see you this morning. And uh, let's see who else on our list. Donna and, and, and Francis continue to pray for comfort for her and then for uh, Devin's father, uh, Tony Anderson. Uh, Tony and Michelle, Scott and Tanya. Can you say anything? Scott got the job. Got the job. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Starts September 1st. Is that right? Yeah. It's awesome, man. It's really cool. And, and uh, uh, it's exciting for them. It's just exciting to see God answer prayer in the midst of what you've been praying for them. So uh, it's an exciting thing. And uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. It takes quite a while. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll send it back out. Okay, I have a, a, a friend. He's even been here uh, several times as well. Uh, Jerry and his wife, Lita, have came up and shared with us. He's from Wichita. And, and he, he struggles. He's the same age as I am. And he struggles with Parkinson's. And he broke his foot recently, uh, about the beginning of our our vacation. And he was asking me for prayer. And so we were. I was praying for him. And and he went to the doctor this week, and it's not healing. It didn't heal at all. And over the last several weeks, and he was completely, uh, kept not put any weight on it at all. So he goes back to the specialist. You, you understand this, right, Cora? Yeah. And uh, to see what kind of treatment they can do or get going. And they said part of it is because of his, his Parkinson's, that that's why it's not healing. And so it's a real struggle for him. And so I'd ask prayer for him. His name's Jerry. And then he texted me yesterday, and his mother, uh, his father passed away just after we graduated from high school about 40 years ago with a, with a heart attack. And then she remarried some years later, and, and uh, his name is Ed, and they took a, a cyst off his hand this week, and they thought it was nothing and realized that it was cancer. And as they realized that it was cancer, it has already metastasized itself to several places, and and he's older, they're, he, he's about 90, and so they're not going to be able to do surgery on him. And they said chemo won't help, uh, so they're just uh, kind of making him comfortable. So uh, pray for Ed. His wife's name is Barbara, that's my friend's mom. Uh, so I told him that we would be in prayer for them as well. And so with that this morning, uh, would you join me in prayer? Lord, you know, in the circumstances of life, we have, we have ups and downs. And, and, and I do pray that for each one of us that, that we do not get uh, just so caught up in the circumstances that we miss, miss you in the midst of it. Uh, Lord, I know uh, we live in a, in a sinful world and it allows things to go on uh, within our bodies that, uh, that you didn't really design to be there. And... Uh, that's all part of uh, a fallen world that we live. And, and so, Lord, I, I pray for a lot of those that are struggling. Uh, uh, Willie had several in his family that are, that are dealing with cancer, and, and my nephew, and, and Ed, and, and even Jerry with not being able to, uh, ha the bone not healing at all, and he's not able to put weight on it. And, and for Linda and the struggles that have uh, just ensued with her, with her knee, and and now with the doctor having COVID. And, and so, Lord, it's just a continual process all the way we go around. But, but Lord, we know that none of this has caught you by surprise. Uh, that you, you are still God. You're still on the throne. Uh, you know and understand each one of these circumstances. And so, Lord, I pray that you would encourage each individual in, in just a special way that only you can. 
Lord, I think of Francis this morning. I think of Peggy that has lost loved ones over this last uh, few weeks. And Lord, I just pray that uh, your special uh, love would just uh, surround them and wrap them and uh, just uh, bring not only strength, but encouragement and, and just hope uh, to each one of those as well. And, and Lord, we lift up baby crew to you again this morning. Lord, we, we continue to pray uh, steadfastly and earnestly for him and for the family. And Lord, we pray just mighty things upon him uh, that you, uh, no matter what, uh, in the midst of whatever the doctors might say or what goes on, Lord, we just pray for your hand of healing. Uh, we know that your divine intervention is far greater than, than anything uh, the doctors can, can muster up. And so, Lord, we ask for your hand, for your healing, and for your touch. And, Lord, that uh, uh, we pray for that family uh, as a whole, well, uh, for the whole extended family, that, Lord, you would just bless them in a mighty way through this, uh, through this trying time. And, Lord, we do pray for our associational team that's uh, working on a, a new uh, director of missions for us. And, Lord, we pray continually that you just bring the right man for the right place to continue and even uh, encourage and, and start a, a fresh and a new uh, work within our association, Lord. There are, there are multiple people around this association that don't know you, and, and Lord, you've called us to be a part of what does, and so Lord, we pray that you uh, uh, provide just the right one at the right time. Uh, Lord, I, I think too, uh, surrounding this state and uh, Kansas and Nebraska Association or, or um, region, Lord, that there are several pastors struggling with, uh, with severe health issues, and we've seen that over the last couple of weeks. And Lord, I know when the, when the shepherd's down, uh, the body struggles, and, and Lord, we just pray for your uh, divine hand upon that as well, that you would continue to uh, uh, work within those uh, bodies to, uh, to rise them up. We pray for the health and healing of, those, of each one of those men that are struggling, and, and Lord, we ask for your blessings upon them. So Lord, we've lifted these things to you this morning uh, by name, by prayer, and, and we just ask that you respond accordingly, uh, Lord, the way you uh, speak to each one of us and expect us to respond accordingly to you as well. So Lord, we give you praise, we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hey, if you'd stand this morning, we're going to sing Shout to the Lord. Bye. 
bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. to the Lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the work of your hands forever I'll love you forever compared to the promise I have in nothing compared to the promise I have in nothing compared to the promise I have in you Amen You guys did good Awesome I know they're on it today I think I even heard some tapping going on oh that was brad okay i was hoping it was somebody out there hey we're going to be in first corinthians 13 this morning if you want to turn there very familiar uh passages but we're going to go to underneath them uh, to one that's kind of secluded in there so we're going to be in first corinthians 13 if you turn there we're going to talk about growing and maturing is part of the plan and so my Great uh, object lesson for today, you can see, is one of them didn't do so good, right? One of them don't look too bad, right? Uh, so we're going to, we'll get back to that towards the end of the message. Uh, as you're turning there, I didn't want to tell you this morning that there was 34 at the lighthouse this morning. That was exciting. There were 12, six and under. Wow, God is doing something. It is, it is really awesome to, to hear what God is doing and to be a part of that. So uh, really, really joyful. And so um, I was sharing with Brad, you're, you're gone now. Where'd you go? There you go. Um, as we continue to move forward, I, I see that here. You know, that's really a, a vision for here that things are going to uh, change and be exciting. And so uh, really, really cool what God is doing. So it's really exciting. And so this morning, growing and maturing is, is part of the plan, really the message, is part of God's plan. And so we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, I'm going to read verse 11. I'm, I'm going to go back and kind of uh, look at that first part of 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, normally, this probably should have been a, a two-part series sermon to get into it and then to get to this point. But with doing the, uh, the Bible study messages each week, uh, we're just going to continue on. So... Um, we'll be right in that whole section. Just stay right there. You know, don't close your book because that's where it's gonna. That's where we're gonna hang out and, and talk and stuff this morning. So, First Corinthians thirteen verse eleven says, "When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and when I became a man, I put away the or put the ways of childhood behind me." Would you join me in prayer? Lord, this morning we are so thankful for an opportunity again to, to gather and worship in the sanctuary. We thank you for the freedoms. We thank you for the opportunity to worship. We, we thank you for the opportunity for uh, being able to minister through Facebook and, and, and speak to the lives and the hearts of those uh, even around the country at the same time that we're ministering right here. And Lord, we give you praise for that. Uh, this morning, Lord, I pray that uh, whoever it is that that listens, whether it's this morning or in the days to come, Lord, that they would, they would hear uh, your words this morning. Uh, this very um, insightful. It's very uh, productive in the lives of disciples. And, and so as the Apostle Paul is, is ministering to the church in Corinth, Lord, I pray this morning that you minister to the church at North. Our outreach, those within our church family, and Lord, that we, would, that we would hear and then just as we uh, really are, are expectant for you to respond to the times that we, prayer, Lord, uh, that we pray, Lord, I, I pray that 
we would be responsive to to your words upon our lives this morning, uh, Lord, that we would not just hear this word, but we would be doers of it. We would apply this to our lives. And so we thank you, we give you praise. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I've always been uh, intrigued about this scripture. You know, right here nestled in the midst of this love chapter is this thought about uh, being a child and growing into and maturing as a, as a man. And uh, uh, growing up in small town America, I grew up in Augusta, which is really similar to Ottawa in all, all ways, the brick streets and everything. And um, as I grew up riding my bike and running around with my friends, um, it was interesting that there was, a, there was a man in our community, he was about 45 years old, but he had the mentality of about a four and a five year old. And uh, as an as a elementary age kid, as a middle school kid, it's hard to understand and didn't really understand who, who he was and how that things were working. And, and uh, his name was Bradley. And Bradley rode a bike everywhere he went. And he kind of lived in our, our section of town. And he rode his bike everywhere. And he loved shiny things, uh, whether it was a, a pop cap or, a, uh, you know, there wasn't uh, fancy things back then. I'm not even sure we had aluminum cans uh, back in my day. Uh, there were pop bottles. We had pop bottles. Uh, and so he would, he would just stop his bike and, and he had a basket on the front and he was always picking up those shiny things, you know. And, and as we ride by, he'd, he'd, you know, he'd say, what's your name? And I'd say, what, Kim? What's your name? Kim? What's your name? Kim? You know, and we'd just, just go on. And really never bothered him. Uh, a lot of time I'd ask him, what's your name? What's your name? You know, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't answer back. And so that, that was Bradley. And, and for him, it was, it was not his fault, and it wasn't his parents' fault. That was God's design uh, for Bradley. And as I, as I grew up and, and uh, began to, to drive, I realized you really had to look out for him. Because uh, he would literally be riding down the street, and it might be in the intersection, or it might be uh, just right in the middle of the street. He would just stop. And get off his bike to go pick up something shiny, you know, and, and put back in his basket. So you had to be really aware of, of who he was and, and what had happened. And, and, but it was God's design uh, for him. Unfortunately, though, in times uh, in our lives, you know, we uh, as disciples, as we as adults, we, we grow, we mature. We have the capacity, we have the opportunity, uh, we have the time in essence, we have all the, the resources, but sometimes we just refuse to grow. And it's not that we refuse to grow, we just don't grow. And so we might have accepted the Lord at some point in our lives, and we're really not a lot farther along than we ever were. Now, that's a lot different than uh, the, the friend in the community there, Bradley, but as a Christian, it's kind of about that. Uh, we are to grow and, and mature in our relationship with the Lord. And so I say it's interesting that the Apostle Paul, he, he starts out this um, chapter talking about love. And it's interesting, he, he had wrote this, uh, he was a part and has kind of established uh, the church in Corinth and he had left and had gone for a while and he, he hears, you know, tell that man, the, the church is just struggling with all kinds of issues and they're, they're following different people, they're chasing after certain, certain gifts, there's, there's uh, uh, immorality going on within the church and they're allowing it to take place and, and all these things are, are happening and, and so the Apostle Paul writes this letter to them to kind of correct those things and, and towards the end of the book, the, or the letter, he gets to this point talking about love. Love. And he said, the love of God and the love for God is superior to all things. Now the Christian, their Corinth, they were obsessed with spiritual gifts. And, and Paul reminded them that no matter what spiritual gift they had or what it was, it was, it was meaningless if they, didn't have, if they didn't have love. And so without love, a person can can use their spiritual gift, but they use it in a way that, that draws attention to them. It's about me and how I do it or how I share it or how I do this or that or, or whatever it is. 
And so no matter how flashy, how loud, how, how good it seems, Paul says, without love, you're missing the whole point. You're missing the point of what those spiritual gifts are to be about. And he said those, those spiritual gifts become nothing. Whether it's prophecy, knowledge, or, or faith to do miracles, without love, it's, it's nothing. And so he really saw that the Corinthian church, they really <clears throat> had missed the point of those spiritual gifts. They tried to make them their own. They tried to use them for themselves. And the Apostle Paul said, that's not the way those are to be established. They're not your own. They're, they're God's. It's interesting. Um, uh, Jim Scadell was in uh, James this morning talking about every good gift. It comes from above. It comes from the Father, right? And and so even the things we have, like this church building, it's, it's not even ours, it's God's. And, and whether it, 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 our cars, you know, that's my car. No, really, that's God's car. And he's loaned it to you. And he's allowing you to make the payment. And if you don't do what he wants, he may repossess it. Right? No, just. Um, but all things are, are gifts from God. And so in the last part of 1 Corinthians 13, verse 2, look down there. It says, if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Now I want you to imagine with me for a moment this morning that if you had faith that could move a mountain, would that be awesome? Man, that would be like, Wow! You know, we, we didn't see any mountains when we were in Michigan, but there's a pretty good dunes and stuff. If, if I could just, oh, move one of those, that would be great. But see, Paul says that even if you have that kind of faith and you don't have love, you're, you're still going to mess it up because you're going to move that mountain in front of Joe's way. Or are you going to set that mountain right on top of Brad just trying to move it from where you were? So even to have a spiritual gift, we're supposed to use it in a way of love and a love that comes from the Father. So it's not just about having spiritual gifts. It's about having love for one another. And so that's the way the Apostle Paul is, is starting it off. So the issue isn't then, you know, spiritual gifts versus love. You know, da da da, da you know, there's going to be a battle. No, there, it's not even about that at all. Paul said the focus of those spiritual gifts really should just be love. And, and the Greek word that Paul used here uh, is agape. And that's one of four Greek words that are throughout the New Testament for love. And we've talked about that so many times, you know, in the past as well that uh, you know, uh, our word for love today is for everything. You know, I love my car, I love my wife, I love chicken, uh, fried, by the way. Um, you know, uh, I, I love ice cream, I, I love my family. And so we love, but we, we just combine that all into one sense of love. And so they didn't, they had different words that meant. And so when Paul said love, he said agape. And so they understood that it was a, that it was a selfless Self-serving love. Agape loves without changing. It's a, it's a giving type of love. It has very little to do with emotions. It has very little to do with you yourself, but as you love that way, it changes the things you do. It changes the way you see things. It changes the things that you say. Now, many Christians believe then that the Christian life is all about sacrifice. You know, it's about sacrificing your time. It's about sacrificing your money. It's about sacrificing your talents. It's about sacrificing uh, your life. It's about sacrificing. And, and it is. But Paul says if you do it without love, then you've still missed the whole point. He said, it profits you nothing. 
And so it's interesting now, by the time you get to verse 4, we're only at verse 4 in this time where he's talking about love. And he says, love is patient and love is kind. So Paul gives us a a short description of what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Now how many of you are patient? Raise your hand. Exactly. Yeah. You see, I did not raise my hand either. I, you know, I'm I'm probably more patient. But now, I don't need to say that. Right? In some areas than others or more than I used to be. What about kind? We can be kind, kind of. Patient is interesting. But so Paul gives us a description of what love is and and really how it operates. He said, love is to be patient and love is to be kind. Then Paul goes on in the last part of verse 4 through 6 to give us eight things that love is not. Love is not envious. You can follow through in your Bible. Love is not proud. It's not arrogant, it's not rude, it's not clickish, it's not touchy, it's not suspicious, and it's not even happy with evil. Those things produce hurt in others. And so I want you to listen to me this morning. Love does not cohabitate with those things in that section of Scripture. Now Paul did say, love is patient and love is kind, But he said, love is not these other things. And then when he gets to verse 7, the Apostle Paul goes back and he gives us four things again that love is. Something that's strong, hopeful, enduring. He says it bears all things. Now I capitalized a couple things in here. I want you to key in on what I capitalized. It's probably not in your Bible that way. Bears all things. Believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. How many things? All All things. Is that difficult? Yes. Without Christ in your life and the Holy Spirit working within you, it is impossible. You can't do it, but the Holy Spirit can do it through you. And the Apostle Paul said, these are all things, all things. And when Paul says all things, it means all things, right? So we can actually measure our spiritual maturity this morning. If you had this little beeper or this little uh, machine, you know, I I could plug you in and and we could plug it in electricity and you'd stick your fingers in it. We could see how spiritually mature you'd be. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be fun? For us it would be, right? We could watch them. Yeah. Now, but if you want to measure your spiritual maturity... As you read through this, this is one of the things that I share with almost every couple that I've ever counseled before they were married. And and as you read through these first seven verses, you're to put your name where the word love is. And read that. And you you can check your spiritual maturity to see where you really are. It's interesting. And so that brings us right back this morning to where we started. So all this was to get to here. Okay, so he says, so we're talking about love. And right at this point, he says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Now, you might not remember when you were a child, but you can remember back at a certain point, you know, early on in your life. But we also have children in here, or you have children or grandchildren or neighborhood kids, and so you understand the the reasoning and the thought process of a child, right? There is no such thing as time, and almost no such thing as the word no, when they're little. What is that? No? What do you mean no? Let me touch that anyway and see. Oh, that's what no meant. (laughs) That was hot, right? And so I thought like a child, I, I reasoned like a child. And so the process of here that the Apostle Paul is saying is that he's learning through this process. When I was a child, I, I talked like a child. I, I couldn't complete my sentences. And sometimes I didn't even know what I was saying, but I could talk. And if Trey was in here, he'd be repeating everything that I say, you know. Or if I say amen, he'd say amen. I'm not sure what he understands in that process, but he's just repeating it right and so we're learning this process 
I thought like a child. Well, as a child, I thought the best thing in the whole wide world is to play. Playing is the greatest thing in the world, right? School, no. Playing, yes. School starting, bad. Playing, good, right? And, and that was my thought as a child. And, and so I reasoned like a child. That's the way I reasoned. Playing good, school bad. Playing good, reading bad. But I like to read, so reading's okay. Riding my bike, good, right? Taking out the trash, bad. And so there was, there was reasoning going on, and a, a child was learning, but he says, when I became a man, I put those ways behind me because I, I, I kind of know and understand a little bit now. Time is a concept. There is time where we have to be reverent. There's times where we need to sit and be quiet. There's times where we need to talk. There's times where we need to work. There's times where we need to play. There's times where we need to spend time with family. And there's times where we need to spend time with others. And so there's, there's times. And so there's things in there in the midst of it. And so Jesus designed his church. See, this is really cool. He designed his church to showcase God's family to the world. Interesting, isn't it? So God is showcasing what a family looks like by each one of you to Ottawa, to this world, to the north side, to Pomona. You've made a huge impact in Pomona. And now we've come back and are nestled in and are going to do the same type of ministry work Ministering to families on the north side. And God builds his family around Jesus. And that family cares for and loves one another. Loved. And in this love section that Paul's using, he's talking about agape. He's saying self-serving, self-sacrificing, not worrying about if you get noticed because of your gift, but that you use your gift for the body. Now, the newborn, we got uh, not a newborn, but a newly born up here in the front this morning. And that baby has to continue to grow after birth. It needs to grow. And so you feed it, you water it, and because of that, you get to change it. Thank you. You all understand the process. Yes, you passed whatever class that was in school, right? Yeah, okay. And so believers are to continue to grow in their faith as well. So we're, we're sanctified and we continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus so that we do increase our faith. And, and we might have faith that can move a mountain, but we don't just set it in front of somebody else or set it on top of them. We have faith that moves. And it's not even our faith, it's God that's putting that faith in us by trusting him to do the things that he's done. And so, that's what Paul's saying. So all birth results in growth. And we grow at different rates, in different ways. Beautiful, isn't it? It's our pride and joy. We've kept it in the children's area downstairs for about the last three years. Just like this. Now I'm going to ask you, did it get too much water or not enough? It could have been either. See, sometimes you have to balance what you have and what you do to make sure that the balance brings life. You can do a lot of good things, but the good things lead to bad things, and they don't lead to God things, then they're not really good things. And so, so that's, that's this plant. And there's no amount of water or fertilizer or anything that can bring this back to life at this point. It's dead but it's beautiful and we've kept it this way just kind of as a um, memento for what what can take place and so really what I want you to understand is yes uh, 
you probably think not enough water killed it, but it could have been too much. So too much of one thing could be too much. Now this plant is beautiful, isn't it? Looks really nice. It's fake. <laughs> but it looks really nice. And sometimes as Christians, this is what we become. We look really good. We, we know the songs. We might even be able to run through the scriptures and find certain things. But this is our life. It's a fake plant with dust all over it that you have to keep shaking the dust off. But there's never, ever going to be life in this either. It doesn't matter how much you water it. It doesn't matter how much you fertilize it. This is not coming to life. This, in essence, is the same thing at this point as this. Now, this looks bad. These are your neighbors that you don't get along with. <clears throat> they just look bad, right? They're mean and ornery scoundrels. If they just move, our whole neighborhood would be better. And then here we are in the same neighborhood. If everybody looked just like us, look, think how good that would be. No. And, and that's what Paul's saying. You know, as a, as a babe in Christ, we need to grow just like a babe in life. And as God provides, and, and he created you in your mother's womb, and he created you with specific talents and purposes and, and thoughts, and, and he had you for this time area purposely. But he wants us to grow in our relationship and, and not too much of this or not too much of that, but just the right balance to, to bring life. And then there comes to a point in our life where we realize that we're sinners and, oh my goodness, uh, without his saving grace, I, I would spend eternity separated from him. And so I accept the provision of Jesus' salvation for us so that I can have life. And then we have rebirth. And so now we have a, an opportunity that has endless opportunities. Ways to do things. But we have to be careful with that too. Too much of this or not enough of that. And we end up like this instead of what God wants for each one of us. See, growing and maturing as a disciple, as a, as a believer in Christ, isn't just a matter of, of changing outward behaviors. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to work on the inside. And, and to clean up the flesh isn't really what God's looking for. You know, we have, we have a little garden area in our house and little flowers, and every year you have to pull weeds out of it. Now, I did not plant them. You understand what I'm saying? But every year they're there. Pull them out. Last Monday, I spent four hours in this area that wasn't even as big as this pulling weeds. And I had a burn pit this big around this deep full of, full of weeds. I never planted one of them, but they were all there. They crept in. They were all different kinds. They weren't just one. Man, I had several different kinds of weeds. And I thought, boy, that is so relevant to this message this week. That's our life. And in our lives, and as you go through your life, each year and each month, and as you go through, weeds creep in. They're not always the same kind. Sometimes they're different. Sometimes they're prickly. They were, I had this one thing that looked like a dandelion that was about this tall and had big old sharp points on the end of it. And, and I, as I went to grab it, it was going to poke me. And it did a couple times. And I said, okay, for you, buddy. So I went and got the shovel. 
And I popped him out at the root. And that's what we need to do as well. See, we can't just clean up the weeds in our lives and expect it to look better and be okay. We have to go to the root of the problem to really make the difference. But we can't just assume because we've cleaned the weeds out that they'll never come back because, I'm sorry to say, they'll be back again next season. And we'll be doing the same thing. And so in our lives, to grow and mature doesn't mean just a one-time thing. It means there's a continual process in our lives of checking and balancing of what's going on. And so every member is a part of God's body on this earth. And, and together we were to reach the world for the, the lost. To minister to them and to help them understand. And, and a new believer in Christ might not think the way you do. Because if you can think back, I'm not sure how long ago it was for you before you were saved, but some of the behaviors you had before you came to Christ were probably not Christ-like. Now, I can ask for hands. I can raise my hand to this one. Uh, and I'm still in the process of that working out. I still have weeds that I'm plucking out at the root. And so as you bring somebody in in Christ, uh, they still have the same behaviors that they had because they're just a new babe in Christ. And so they're learning how to, how to drink and how to eat and, and how to be changed. I'm not even sure how to be changed. So you're going to have to help me learn how to be changed. Now, we're all excited when we, when we change a baby's diaper, right? You would be less excited if you were changing an adult's diaper. Amen. But that's kind of the way it is. And so you nurture, you bring along. It requires a balance of putting this in and that in, just enough water, just enough fertilizer to, to keep them alive and going and, and keep them going and keep them growing and maturing in the relationship. And really, when we help somebody else, hear me, it helps you too. It, it does. And so if you are not ministering to someone else today, you are missing out on a world of opportunities that God is trying to place before you. I've heard so many times in the years before when I've asked people to teach Sunday school or do some different things or children's messages and stuff, um, this blesses me more than it ever does to kids. You're right, it does. Because... You, you study, you prepare, you get ready, and all of a sudden you realize that lesson really wasn't for those children. It was for me in the first place. And I just get to share it with those children. And so as we disciple one another, it's the same way. You are growing as you're feeding them to help them grow as well. Man, does God have this figured out or what? He's a pretty smart guy. And so if we could just latch on to some of what he's doing we could make a difference in this community. Now, most of the New Testament is written to churches, not to individuals. That means the importance of the Christian fellowship cannot be overrated, cannot be overstated. But fellowship is more than church attendance. We can't be spectators. But we can't just be in attendance. Each member is a part of God's body that God has intricately placed you in with the right, whether you're this or this or this, this is not even real, but if it was real, you know, you all have what this body needs to function. And as this body grows and does things, he will bring in the appropriate people to continue to fulfill what needs to be done. Because that's who God is. See, this is not your church. It's not my church. It's his church. And he wants this church to succeed because it's his church. And it was bought with the blood and the life of his son, Jesus Christ. Why would he not want this to succeed? And so he's going to fill it 
with exactly what it needs to do what he wants it to do. You know why? Because that's who God is. And you, can, you can look around this room this morning, don't get up and shake anybody's hand, but you can look around the room this morning and you can be thankful that God placed them in here in this room. Because he had the purpose for them. He had the plan in this body for them. And that's exciting. God knew you. Did you ever think that uh, when you were about six or seven years old and you were playing with your matchbox cars or you were playing with your uh, dolls or whatever you were playing with, you know, or whether you were taking the trash out, maybe, I don't know. In, in the midst of that, that in, what is today, August 15th, 2021, you'd be a part of this body and making a difference in this community. No, you did not. I did not. God did. Just like Esther, he created you for such a time as this. So, so worship of the king, it's not optional. It's what he calls us to do. And so a believer is a disciple, and a disciple must find a church that teaches God's word, gets involved in serving, develops healthy relationships, not just relationships. You know, it's easy to tell a, a teenager, you know, you, you can have a lot of friends, but you need to make sure you pick your friends. And you need those to be healthy relationships because they will make a difference as you grow. Now I'm here to tell you adults, it is very important in the relationships that you choose. They are to be healthy relationships that lead you to doing good things that God would provide because I told you earlier, good things can become God can become bad things if they're not having you do God things. If they're not leading you to do God things, then that relationship is you might want to reevaluate and recalculate. Or you might want to just start feeding or fertilizing or whatever it is to get that relationship to that point. I think I missed the scripture, didn't I, Jessica? Oh yeah, 1 Corinthians 12, 25. There should be no divisions in the body, but that as part should have equal concern for one another. It's back up right at the end. You know, when, when, when Paul wrote the letter, it wasn't in chapters and verses. It was a part, it was a thought. And this end of chapter 12 goes right into the beginning of chapter 13. And he says... There should be no division in the body. His part should have equal concern for one another. That's still agape love. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 13, 11. That's where we're going to close. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Before you became a Christian, you did have patterns and behaviors that seemed okay in your life. Because you were not a Christian. You were of the world. But now you're a Christian. You don't really have opportunities for saying, I, I, we don't have excuses. I didn't know any better. It's right here. If we don't know any better, it's because we didn't take time to feed our inner new spiritual man or woman. The New Testament is full. Paul's letters to the Colossians, to the Galatians, to the Corinthians, it, it tells us really how we're to be, how we're to love, what we're to do, how we're to act, what we're to, what we're to be about. All, all those things are right there. So we don't have that excuse now. And so Paul lays out this plan now for, for growing and maturing in our relationship with the Lord. He said, we need to learn to crucify the flesh. We need to cut away the dead. Now, I'm not going to cut it away because I like this as an example. But we cut away the dead to keep what's alive. And sometimes 
you know, um, I, I cut my roses back so they'll rebloom. I cut my blackberries back so they'll continue to pro produce uh, uh, fruit uh, the next year and then the next year and the next year. And I never ask it, but I always wonder, you know, when I cut that back, does it hurt? And if that rose or that blackberry could answer, it'd say, ouch. You're, you're cutting part of me that still had life in it. But to produce more, some of that had to be cut away. And so that's where we got to get in our lives. To, to grow and mature means that we continually surrender more and more areas of our lives in obedience to Christ and let him control things and not control things ourselves. And so the, the, the closer you walk with the Lord, the more of a stranger you should feel in this world. That is true. Because this is not our home. So there has to be a balance of watering. There has to be a balance of, of planting. There has to be a balance of, of fertilizing, nurturing, pruning, taking care for a disciple to be a part of the church. And for the church to grow. And that means knowing your spiritual gift, using your spiritual gift. That means uh, understanding who you are. That means understanding your relationships. That means understanding the, the things in your life that God probably wants to prune out so that you can continue to grow and become who he wants you to be. Trevor's cute. I mean, he's my, he's my grandson. He's not cute because he is my grandson. He's cute because he's, he's cute. And he's, oh yeah, Trent, whatever that kid's name is. I have too many. I can't even remember my own name. Trent. Well, Trevor's cute too, though. And so, if Trent never changes... And he gets to 40 years old. Now, we'll be, some of us will be gone. But the rest of you are, that are still here. And he's 40 years old and he's still sucking on a Bible bottle and wanting somebody to hold him in his lap at 40. There might be an issue. I'd be glad because I wouldn't have to change his diapers. And so we want him to grow. And so we're going to do the right things to help him become who he needs to be. And that's what we need to do to one another. To help us grow. To become who God wants us to be. And so as we seek spiritual growth, we should, we should really pray to God and ask Him for, for wisdom and discernment concerning uh, the areas in His life that He wants us to grow in. Because He does. We can ask God to increase our faith and 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 our knowledge in him, but yet not have faith that would move a mountain on top of someone else or in front of them, but move a mountain that's an obstacle out of the way so that we can all be free from it. God desires for us to grow spiritually. He's given us a, a need even inside our, our own bodies for this desire of spiritual growth. And so with the Holy Spirit's help, we can, we can overcome those things. Now, we can't do it in our own power. And that's what the Apostle Paul says over and over and over. Hey, it's not about you. It's about God living in and through you. And the more you feed him, the more opportunities he has to work through you. And so as we grow and we mature in our relationship with the Lord... And together as a church body, we can win the lost for Christ. That is why we are here. And if it takes feeding them through the food pantry or doing things different in the sanctuary or doing things different on the north side, that's okay as long as this doesn't change. This is what needs to stay the same. Let's pray.
Lord, I thank you this morning again for your, your love for us. You know, you loved us, Lord, when we were unloving. You love us when we are going the wrong way. You love us when we are ornery and cantankerous. And you love us, Lord, because you don't want us to stay that way. You, you, you know what we're capable of. And so, Lord, I pray this morning for each and every one who, who's either in the sanctuary or hears us on Facebook or in the days to come that, that we start to realize our, our purpose and our place in this life and in this world today. And, that, and it only comes through you. It's not about us. It's not about what we want, it's about what you want. Lord, if there's divisions in us, let us see it. Lord, if we don't know what our gift is, bring it to light. Lord, if we're getting too much water or too much fertilizer or not enough of one or the other, help us to balance that out. Lord, help us to disciple others and help us to grow in our relationship with you. So that we become the, the men and women that you've created us to be. Really, Lord, I pray nothing more this morning that you would help each one of us to grow and mature in our relationship with you. That if we need to set more time aside to, to be in your word to be in your prayer, to be in study, to be in fellowship, that we would be intentional about that. Help the outside relationships to be those that continue to diminish and those that are inside to continue to grow. And the Lord, I pray for the church body that it really can make a difference in this community, that that you use us and, and, as vessels to make a difference. Lord, I pray for those people that come through the, the pantry that they wouldn't just see food or provisions, but they really wouldn't see the, the bread of life, your son Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as they pull up and they see those individuals out there, that they see lights. And the light that they're drawn to. And Lord, did you give them opportunities to, to minister and to share about your goodness and your grace and Lord, ultimately about your forgiveness. Lord, we see the works of your hand. We, we sung that song just a few minutes ago. And so Lord, help us to get involved and be a part of who you are and what you're doing. Lord, minister to our hearts, to our minds. Help us to surrender those things that are holding us back from a closer walk with you and a closer fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we give this time to you this morning in such a way that I ask, Lord, that you would, you would sanctify it, that you would consecrate it, that you would... Make it holy. And Lord, as these individuals leave or those that are watching depart from wherever they're at, that they'd be like Moses and they would glow and they would understand that they have been with you. And that would be that you would create a desire for more of that. More and more of you. And so, Lord, we give you praise for this day. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for loving me. Even when we're unloving, unlovingly, un, uh, unfriendly, unkind. And Lord, help us to look at our relationship with you. Help us to see our, the sacrifice you made for us. And apply that in the lives of those around us. The Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray.
Amen. If you stand this morning, we're going to sing in the sweet by and by. And really, if God has spoken to you, if, if uh, you have a decision to make, whether to join the church, be baptized, or if you need prayer this morning, I encourage you to come as we, as we sing in the sweet by and by. <clears throat> morning uh, when we're, we're all done if you want to come up here for those that are interested uh, even if you haven't signed up if it's something that's uh, on your mind thought come up here and we're going to uh, talk about the children's ministry as it continues to move forward here in the fall um we we'll always give you an opportunity to share in uh in uh, offering and in, in tithes through uh the ministry here at north and, and you can do that through uh life of generosity you can do that by mailing a check into the church and just putting attention lend on it or you can uh, drop it in the offering plate as you come and, and go each time. It's a, it's a great opportunity to continue to help the, the ministries and the things that are moving and going on in uh, uh, at, at North and, and it follows, uh, not follows, but uh, follows itself all the way over to the to the lighthouse as well. So we encourage you to do that as well. Um, <coughs> departing thoughts this morning. Hey, can't wait to see you on Tuesday. Can't wait to see you on Thursday. Can't wait to see you on Wednesday. A lot of times I don't see you, but you see me. But uh, uh, it, it's great. We uh, I'm sharing with Tanya this week. Um, we have about seventy to ninety on Wednesday nights now uh, from around the country. It's really, really interesting uh, how that's really expanded, and so it's a complete different thing uh, than what we are normal and accustomed to. But things uh, change in that way, and I'm really thankful for God opening up uh, what He did. You know, COVID is an awful bad thing. But he sure opened up some ways for us to do a lot of things that uh, we didn't do before and, and minister uh, to a whole different group of people that we ever had opportunities for before. Anyway, as we close this morning, I'm going to close in prayer that we're going to sing, Blessed Be the Tithes, and then I want you to funnel up right here. Amen. <laughs> All right, Lord, we thank you again this morning for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for uh, guiding and directing us. and. Lord, help us to continue to follow you. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would uh, help us to minister to this uh, community, this side of town in, in a mighty way. And Lord, not only this side, but as it, it reaches far beyond that. Uh, Lord, help us to uh, 
uh, learn to uh, be more Christ-like, uh, help us to see what that balance looks like in our lives and enable us to uh, do and say what we need to uh, do so we can be who you call us to be. Lord, we give you praise for this morning. We do thank you for the provisions for our church body. Uh, we know that uh, you are the one that truly provides. And so, Lord, we give you praise for that. Uh, thank you again for all you say and do. Lord, uh, work with us uh, as uh, incapable as we are. Lord, you know how capable we can be in you. So we give you praise. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Blessed be the time. Thank you to, for those of you to come forward this morning.